I'd say that this big bird is ready for carving. Well, seeing as how we have a new head of the family, I think it's time you started pulling your own weight around here. <laughs> Looks like you're gonna get a chance to meet the rest of the family. My psychotic brother just escaped. With Halloween winding down, I thought it was time we dive deep into the slasher catalog and take a look at a film that's not often talked about. And not only is it a film that's not talked about, but it's for a holiday that really doesn't get its slashery due. I'm Tyler with Joe Glow Horror, and today on Real Slashers, we're covering all of the identical twin shenanigans of 1987's Blood Rage. We're doing things a little bit different today. See, the scene I really want to slice up is right at the beginning, and it wouldn't make much sense to go over the entire story and then go back to the opening. So instead, let's just deal with it now, and then we'll move over to the story itself. We start on a drive-in, and this guy getting some delicious popcorn while this music blares in the background. Totally 80s. Then he's got to meet up with his drug dealer, played by Ted Raimi. Except he's not exactly dealing drugs. Oh no, instead, he may be the world's first condom dealer. The true savior of horny high schoolers everywhere. But we aren't just dealing with horny teens in this movie. No, we've got horny adults too. This mom is on a date and has decided to take her two boys with her, Terry and Todd. They're off at the drive-in, apparently in the hopes to get lucky because I guess doing it in front of the kids is a kink or something. The boys immediately wake up and go exploring. Terry is really not a fan of his mother hooking up. We know something isn't quite right with him right from the jump because he finds a hatchet in the back of someone's truck and looks at it like it's the solution to all of his problems. And I think the filmmakers just made a mistake with which kid picks up the hatchet because we see that Terry has it in the next scene. So I'm still going to say this was Terry and not Todd here. He happens to come across a teen couple who are getting busy in their car. As soon as they notice that Terry is watching them, they yell at him to get away. But this just triggers the boy, and he smacks the teen upside his head with the hatchet. He hits this guy so many times in the face that it's a miracle he even has a face left. Then this poor girl runs out of her car naked as the day she was born. Which is when we get the funniest cutaway. Thought I heard somebody scream. Oh, <sighs> uh, no, duh, you think? By the time everyone at the drive in comes in to see what happened, Terry has framed his brother Todd with the murder. Todd can do nothing except stare in shock at the scene, making him look pretty damn guilty. And we've officially set up our story. Terry! What happened? Are you all right? Sure, I'm all right. What is that thing in your hand? It's Todd. He's gone totally out of his mind. He's killing people all over the complex. God, what a way to begin this one. An identical twin murders someone and then frames their brother? Talk about some shitty family. Poor Todd is institutionalized and Terry gets to live a pretty normal life. Despite being a closeted psychopath, Ten years into his institutionalization, Todd starts to remember what actually happened that night, and even informs his therapist. When the therapist tells the mother about what she believes happened, this woman gives an Oscar-caliber-worthy performance. No more tests! My children are not guinea pigs! Yikes. Completely in denial about her precious Terry, their mother tries to move on, even getting engaged. Only she doesn't seem to realize that it's her promiscuity that triggers Terry. In fact, Todd escapes from the mental asylum, and Terry takes this as his opportunity to satiate his bloodlust. His first victim is his mom's fiance, who cuts off his hand while drinking a beer. The victims in this are really stupid, essentially just standing still and waiting for Terry to murdulate them. And not all of the deaths are even shown on screen with some just being quick cutaways. But don't let that dissuade you, as they make sure to show us some of the gory aftermaths, and it's more than worth it. 
Oh, and while I would call this one of the only Thanksgiving slasher films out there, it doesn't really amount to much more than a brief scene with some light turkey carving. It doesn't really play into the plot either, so its inclusion feels more like the producers going, well, most slashers take place around some kind of eventful day, so we'll pick one that hasn't been done before. Why they chose Thanksgiving is beyond me. Maybe the family aspect? And unsurprisingly for a slasher of the era, the acting in this is rough. With glorious moments such as this. It's okay, Mom. Hey, hey, I'm Brad King. I'm the manager here. Maybe I can be of some help. But that really just adds to the entertainment value as a whole. Just like the sheer amount of nudity, which almost falls into the category of excessive. I mean, hell, at one point there's a couple having sex on a diving board, for God's sake. There's also a great bit where Terry and Todd's mother discovers her fiancé's body, and it's so hilarious with how long it takes her to realize that he's actually dead. This woman may just be the dimmest to ever exist. Eventually, Todd and Terry come face to face, and Terry, being the insane killer that he is, gets the better of Todd while they're fighting in the pool. But thankfully, their mother is finally sick of Terry's shit and shows up with a gun, shooting him in glorious fashion. Or so it seems. Turns out that she actually thought that she was shooting Todd and not Terry. A fact that she is very disappointed with. The movie ends with Todd and his mother both proclaiming, I'm Todd! No! No! Until she fucking shoots herself, unable to live with everything that has happened. Yeesh. No! No more tests! No more tests! My children are not guinea pigs! So we have two people to talk about here, Todd and Terry. Todd is the person that everyone thinks is a psychotic killer, and Terry is the one that actually is the psychotic killer. They both look like they're about 35, and for some reason I can't really see Todd without thinking of Connor O'Malley. So you don't have pornos and calendars? Which is kind of ironic because Todd and Terry are actually played by the same actor, Mark Soper. And he does a good job of making them feel like very different people. Todd is just so damn awkward. You seem nice. I've never kissed a girl before. Oh yeah? Well, um, you really ought to try it sometime. I gotta go. Bye! Terry doesn't really follow the stereotypes of the standard slasher killer. Hell, he even smokes a joint at one point. Something that would have signaled certain death for any would-be victims in any other slasher. And the clear joy that he gets from this is great to watch. I mean, just look as he cleans himself up after. You can just see how proud he is. Which just makes him all the more intriguing. Todd, on the other hand, is just a weirdo in every sense of the word. Watch as he even tries putting his doctor's body back together and even yells at her. These two are just something else. One of the more messed up kills is when Terry takes out this mother and her date, while the poor lady's baby cries in the background, completely helpless. Fortunately, he doesn't take out the baby. This isn't that kind of movie. But it does mean that we have a crying baby during a portion of the ending. And the pure glee that Terry has on his face as he's running around with his bloodied up machete makes it a complete mystery as how we didn't get more films for Terry to be able to ham it up in. The sequels to this would have been glorious. You know what else Dr. Berman told me? What? She told me that Todd never killed anybody. Blood Rage, otherwise known as Slasher, otherwise known as Nightmare at Shadow Woods, was released in March of 1987 despite being filmed all the way back in 1983. It sat on the shelf for many years until they finally decided it was worth releasing. The Shadow Woods version cuts out all of the gore. Which is too bad because that's really where the film shines. Arrow Video released a version of Blood Rage that actually included the Nightmare at Shadow Woods cut. So if you're wanting to see an even shorter and considerably less bloody version, then feel free to check that out. Though I would definitely recommend the standard gore-filled version instead. This Arrow release even has the original title of Slasher in its opening. The film is so unknown that it doesn't even have a proper tomato rating on Rotten Tomatoes. So it's no surprise if you've never heard of this one. 
but I certainly hope that you track this down. Because if you're a fan of slashers, there are few that hit so many ridiculous milestones than this one. Plus, at only 82 minutes, there are worse ways to spend your time. Unfortunately, we never received a sequel, and Blood Rage has always been kept off the long list of remakes. Whether that ever happens will be up to viewers like you spreading the word on this absurd little slasher gem. I know I will be talking about it to all that will listen, because the killer Terry Simmons must be seen to be believed. That is not cranberry sauce. It's not cranberry sauce, Artie. It's not cranberry sauce.